I'm going to go over how CAPM is related to the size effect. Remember the CAPM. The CAPM is basically the security market line. It relates expected return here in the vertical axis to beta here on the horizontal axis. The higher the beta, the higher the expected return. Let's do this algebraic formula here. The expected return equals the risk-free rate plus the beta. That's the how much of risk times the risk premium, which is the expected return on the market over the risk-free rate. Um, the first empirical evidence of the CAPM, the three big ones, one of them was by Eugene Fama. And they found that when you looked at beta and you looked at annual returns, what did you see? Uh, well, when they did this little correction, they, they found a, a nice positive linear relationship with annual return. So for the next 20 years, people thought, okay, beta, beta works. Look, this is real data. Um, in the meantime, uh, around 1980, Bonds and Reingenum found that uh, there's this huge beta effect, huge. I mean, look at these bars here. These are annualized returns. Lowest SL stock, 16%. Highest SL stock, 3%. That's a 16% return premium uh, for, for small cap. Uh, you know, there was a small cap firms were clearly had higher beta, but it wasn't sufficient to explain this. Uh, so that was a real puzzle. And uh, in the 80s, lots of people were trying to figure this out. Uh, Fama and French in 92 really synthesized this. And they said, hey, if you control for size, uh, beta goes away. So what we documented before, these black dots that go up, 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 uh, these red dots are really what we see after you control for size. That is, if you cross-tab by size, the real relationship uh, is flat, if not negative. And really, you know, this is a classic omitted variables um, bias that you see in lots of uh, scientific uh, findings. Uh, say you had a theory that longer-haired people are short. You know, you were a Martian, you looked at people, and you said, hey, the, the longer-haired humans seem to be shorter than, than the uh, short-haired uh, people. Uh, but really, the omitted variable there is gender. Um, you know, women tend to be shorter than men. Women tend to have longer hair than men. So if you control for gender, within gender, there's no relationship between hair and height, obviously. Um, and, uh, but between, if, between the genders, obviously, there's a correlation. So you have to control for the true factor. And it's really not interesting to say that hair is correlated with height because that's incidental. In a similar way, these, these small cap firms had higher betas and they had higher returns than these large cap firms. Uh, so if you drew a line through all the data, you'd get a positive relationship. But it solely picked up the size effect that was in the data. And the size effect itself had many biases, but nonetheless. Uh, so that poisoned these results. And control for that beta stinks.